Hello everybody. Tonight we are making jumbo sausage stuffed shells for dinner. I have half an onion on my cutting board and I have my pan with a little bit of oil on the stove. I'm going to cut these up pretty fine. At least attempt to. You get a couple pieces that are a little bigger, it should be okay. Put them straight into your pan, folks. You can use the back side of your knife to do that. Don't use your blade. It dulls your blade up real bad. I'm going to add two pounds of sausage. To the onions. To the onions. I'm going to give them a quick... Stir first. Waste not, want not. Right, love? Right. I can't stand wasting Good meat. food. See if I can get this to get this one to come off a little bit easier. I think it did. I think it came out a lot better that time. So I'm just going to chop it up. I'm using this uh, plastic spatula so I don't damage my skillet. What was it, this sausage? Is this the Weber sausage? Uh, no. It was, um, old folks. Old folks. Sausage. Medium. Medium. I'm pretty sure this is the sausage my mother always used. But if you like hot sausage, you can use hot sausage. I think I would like hot sausage, but Michelle wouldn't care for it at, care all. For it at all. So. I'm going to 
put the lid on that to let it simmer a little bit. And I am going to uh, take you over to the prep table because Michelle is going to prep some baby spinach to go in our stuffing. Everybody, we're back to make sure that we get our vegetables sliced up in the proper fashion. Here's our baby spinach. It came from Market Side, which is a Walmart brand, I believe. chopping up our spinach so it's not so overwhelming in size when you go to eat it. This will also make it easier to stuff inside the pasta shells. You know, I wish I'd uh, thought about it. That might have went good in our seven layer salad. A little bit of spinach? It would have made it really good. Yeah. That seven layer salad that we made in our previous video is what we're also having to go along with this supper this evening. Smell that sausage, Steven. Yeah, it's uh, really doing good. After that, Michelle, go ahead and chop up some of them mushrooms so we can add that to the onions and sausage. I'm going to put Michelle's mushrooms in the pan 
so they can be cooking. She said she didn't want to put too many in there. She thought they had a very strong flavor. And sometimes you need a less is more mentality. That freaked me out. There was something green in the sausage, and it was a little piece of baby spinach that had uh, stowed away on my spatula, and it got in my sausage, and I said, what in the world is that green thing? And I thought, man, uh, something is wrong with this sausage, and it was just a little piece of baby spinach. I don't know how that got on that this spatula. This spatula. It came in with, it, the, it came in with the cutting board when I raked the Mushroom. mushrooms. There was a piece of baby spinach on that cutting board. That won't hurt nothing. You know, I think I'm going to turn this water up because... Don't. We're not ready for the shells yet, babe. Well, by the time it starts boiling, I think we will be. Because, well, this sausage, you're not over here looking at it. This sausage is uh, close to being done. No, you still have way too many bigger chunks. Let me see that. All right, I want to let you put your touch on it. Thank you, dear. There's no way this would have stuffed uh, shells very easily, Stephen. Well, I know it, but it's hard to mush up than what you think. What I should have done was I should have crumbled it up with my fingers before I ever started frying it. Keep doing what I'm doing. Find the big ones and break them up. Michelle has a lot of arthritis in her hands uh -huh. and it's hard for her to do this chopping action. Look, look on that package Michelle and see how long it takes them uh, jumbo uh, that jumbo pasta to cook because this is this uh, water is at a roaring boil is it roaring or rolling rolling, rolling? rolling. okay it's at a rolling boil I'd say 10 minutes uh, you know, I remember that uh, video we watched on how to do this. She cooked them for nine minutes. Okay, well, it says 14 to 16 minutes, so... Well, you, they have to come out 
firm so I you know, can so stuff them. Can stuff them. Yeah. And they stand up to so, so they can't they can't be fully cooked because they're going to cook more in the in the in the oven when you uh, bake them. Ooh. Sorry. It's so, all right. So I want to put our timer on nine minutes, and it's important. This one's the, they're they're at a rolling boil again, baby. I don't know. I don't remember. It's they're rolling right now. Anyway, it's very important that when you uh, drain these that you uh, spray them with cold water to stop the cooking process. Because if they get too so soft, you won't be able to stuff them. They won't stand up. Let me see. Looking a lot better, baby. Yeah. Alright, we're almost to the point where we gotta drain it. Alrighty, you can uh, drain the grease, Michelle. I'd say you probably can't even see them uh, mushrooms in there. Not really, no. This can be set right here. The heat from the meat will wilt the spinach so you don't have to cook it. We're going to put some of this ricotta cheese in our mix once that's done. Hands are so bad I can't even open this cheese. Now we're just going to eyeball this regatta cheese because uh, we've seen people uh, that didn't even use the regatta cheese. They just uh, stuffed these shells with straight meat. But we're going to put some regatta cheese in it because we think that'll, good. that'll taste good to us. And here's your favorite pasta sauce. Today we're using... Fresh mushroom, Prego. Yes, Prego. And that's going to be our binder and our sauce. You can smell the spinach already. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't even put any uh, in the meat mixture because I think the cheese will hold it together just fine. There'll be. 
there'll be plenty of that red sauce uh, on the outside of it. Uh, well, you can see how it uh, feels once you put the regatta cheese in it, Michelle. I'm telling you, that stuffing looks good, I think. Uh, I mean, you're making it look even better the more you do to it. I'm just trying to get it to bind together. When I said that it looked good, I felt like you might have took me as saying it looks good, leave it alone, but that's not how I meant it. Okay. I just want to clarify that. <laughs> I think this is stuffable. It was turning to tell me you think you can stuff oh, it. Oh, I, th I think it looks good. I think all we need now is our uh, shells. We should have 35 seconds left on. Make sure that water is running out cold. Yeah, go ahead. She's going to uh, strain them uh, shells. And then she's going to stop the cooking process by putting that cold water. And to save on dishes, I'm going to use the same strainer that we drain the meat. I should have had that done for you, Michelle. I'm sorry. It's all right. the water keep draining. Do you have your pan ready? Well, I'm going to uh, get that. And I thought that uh, I might stuff some of them, Michelle, so that you can let your hands have a rest. Now, everybody I've seen make this has used a rectangle glass pan. And I... I'm going to use my round pan because I think that they'll turn out really well in this round pan and, and I'll have a video that nobody else has got. At least I haven't seen anybody use a round pan to do this. Just don't forget to put your pasta sauce in the bottom. I'm going to. So you need to put a small amount of uh, your tomato sauce, the fresh mushroom, on here so that your shells don't stick to the bottom of the pan. And I'm just going to use the back of this spoon to, to move it around. I thought I had plenty in there, but 
There we go. I think that'll do better. Because this will probably make it easier to serve later and you won't have to struggle to get it out. So right there is what it looks like. I just put a small amount down there. And so I'm going to wash my spoon. I'm going to grab me a shell here and you want to really put a generous amount in here so I'm just going to do three or four of these because I don't know how long this part is going to take but I'm going to put them on the edge and go all the way around until I get to the center. So that was one. You licked your finger. Oh, did I lick my <laughs> finger? Yes. Well, this one can be yours, okay? <laughs> I, I tell you, when you get sauce and stuff on your finger, it's hard to just leave it there. I want to use a different shell because that one was kind of jacked up. Is that the jacked up one that's on that plate? That one was ripped. And if I end up having too many shells, I can always uh, throw away the bad ones. So. Scraping my bowl. Well, I tell you, that whole spoonful of stuffing, uh -huh. none of it made it into the shell. Really? That's right. That's soft. Hi, everybody. Let's go ahead and pause the video, Michelle, because we'll uh, we'll film some more once I get. Michelle decided she was going to stuff a couple of them shells now i had to go get her a plastic spoon because she was scraping the pan oh you lie oh you lie i got you a plastic spoon because you wouldn't stop stuffing or scraping my pan Spelling smells really good. I'll tell you what you're doing, Michelle, looks amazing. So this is what it looks like. Is it? Does it look good on? No, nope, you, you're too far up. You're too far up. About there now. you go. Do I need to come closer? You can, but you're as bad as big as you're gonna get. Right there. Yep. That's just showing a little more texture. Okay. Well, that's what it looks like. Isn't that beautiful? That beautiful stuffed shelled sausage pasta ring. Okay. I was the first one to ever do a stuffed pasta sausage ring. All right. Eat your heart out, you two. We're going to drizzle a little bit of sauce in each one. Yeah, you got to make sure you hit each one. 
a little bit on each one. See, putting it in a ring, how much easier it is to hit every single one. Alright, honey, I think that's good. Oh, man, I did an amazing job doing this. Alright, that's good. You don't want to overdo it. Alright, well, now I gotta go and uh, get some cheese. Is this the one we were using? Yes, that is the one we're planning on using. All right. Provolone and mozzarella blend. You know what? I'm messing up because I think you bake this for about 15 minutes and then you pull it out, put that cheese on there, and bake it for about another 15 minutes because I believe that's what. Tamara John said. Well, I don't know well, about... What we're doing is heating up the sauce, really. It wasn't her, it was that other one. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bake it for about 15 minutes. And then I'm going to take it out and put the cheese on and bake it for another. Alright folks, we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, I'm going to pull the sausage stuffed pasta ring out of the oven, and I'm going to put the cheese on it. Oh, man. Can you see that? It looks pretty good. Let's get it a little bit closer where you can see it. That looks pretty good, don't it? Shell just gave me the cheese. that in the oven for another 15 minutes all right let's set the timer for 15 minutes All right, Michelle, she mentioned Tammy Dunn a while ago, and I just want to let everyone know who that is. Tammy and Kevin Dunn are a couple that live in Winchester, Kentucky, and they have a YouTube channel that is totally awesome. I enjoy watching that with Michelle. And they have a video on there that inspired this video for us and we watched that and a few others so that we could sort of combine uh, different videos to make it our own so it would be inspired not copied so she's got a great video on there it, the one we watched was uh, called Stuffed Pasta Shells and Baked Spaghetti. And uh, if you want to, just look up Tammy Dunn, that's the name of the channel, and look that up for yourself and watch it. 
She's got a lot of uh, great videos on there. I believe over 10,000 videos. Uh, they've been doing it for over 10 years, and they are amazing. And uh, I watched their uh, trip to Hawaii, and that was pretty uh, fun and entertaining, too. Well, enough about Tammy and Kevin Dunn. We're going to uh, pause, and then we're going to review uh, our version of... Uh, uh, stuffed sausage pasta ring. Be right back. These are the pasta shells that we didn't use. This is uh, the waste from one box. So uh, we just wanted to show you that, that we had extra because everybody else shows what they didn't use. So we're just uh, following the bandwagon, I guess. I'm putting some Texas toast in so we can have some toast with our sausage pasta ring. The bread hasn't come out yet, but I wanted to give you a sneak peek of uh, the seven layer salad. And looky there, look at that stuffed sausage pasta ring. Man, it looks good. All right, we're ready to start eating. I'll hold up your plate. Yep. Thought about going over there and getting some of that baby spinach to add to this seven layer salad, but I didn't. Thought I'd try just the way it is. No, I'll just start off with this. See, I'm eating healthy tonight. I'm eating salad. Mmm. That seven layer salad is amazing. I'm going to go ahead and try this stuff pasta shell while it's hot. Mmm. I would say that I would not be disappointed if I received this at a restaurant. I think that this is way better than what you could get at a restaurant. You know, everybody goes on and on about them endless salad bowls at the Olive Garden. I'd rather have this seven layer salad than one of them endless pasta bowls. I don't even think they do that anymore, do they? Depends how much you order. Well, I gotta wrap up this video because I don't have very much memory left on my camera. So, I got to wrap this up. So, I, big thumbs up on that. Big thumbs up on the seven layer salad. 
It's all great. So we'll see you next time. Bye.